Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another Crimson Vow draft here on the channel. My name is Nikolai, and in this video, I will be going pick by pick and play by play through a Crimson Vow draft, talking through all of my decisions so you know what to do in your own Crimson Vow drafts. If you enjoy it, remember to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe for more draft content, and comment below with your questions, thoughts, and feedback. Without further ado, let's dive on in. Let's see what we shall see. We open up a solid little rare in the form of Kessig Wolf Rider. Can definitely get in for a few points of damage early. Menace certainly helps with that. And then being able to make a couple of 3-2s in the mid to late game is quite nice. So a solid rare for sure. There's also a couple of, like, there's a pretty good uncommon in the form of Vampire's Vengeance. And then in the common section, Bleed Dry is a very good common. And Lantern Bear is also pretty solid. Not as good as Bleed Dry. So if I was to take a common, I would take Bleed Dry. And then I think that Keswick Wolf Rider is better than Vengeance. And so I think it's mainly between the Wolf Rider and the Bleed Dry in terms of cards to pick here. I think this card can be pretty solid for sure, but it's definitely a bit finicky. It can have mediocre impact, and Bleed Dry is so crucial for a lot of decks. So that makes it very close, in my opinion. Hmm. Filling a graveyard is kind of hard for a red deck. I'm just going to take the Bleed Dry. Very consistent, good card. You're never going to go too far wrong with a Bleed Dry. Now, the uncommons are solid. I um, mean, especially the Spiked Ripsaw. And I think Brian Comer can be good as well. Fierce Retribution is okay. The best black card in the pack is a Doomed Dissenter. But I think Flame Blessed Bolt is the best common overall, followed by Falcon Wrath Celebrants and then Fierce Retribution, I think, is the order I would go in for those. Spiked Ripsaw is the best uncommon. So I think it's between the Flame Blessed Bolt, the Ripsaw, and then I guess if you want if I wanted to stay one color, which I don't really mind. Um like I don't really care about that at this point, I would take Doom Center. But I think it's between the Bolt and the Ripsaw. I think Bolt is just a better card. This it's just like efficient removal is so, so important in this set. Ripsaw is good, but I'll uh I'll maybe if I I don't think uh it's necessarily better than just having some cheap interaction. This card's very, very good. One of the better commons. Okay, and now no need to go too far astray. There isn't a braid in the pack. I if I had taken the ripsaw, reclusive taxidermist would probably be my pick. Just a great two drop for green decks, ramps you out some stuff. But a braid is a great way to start here as well. And since Sanguine Statuette is really only at home in Black Red, we might even be able to get that sort of card later. But Flame Bliss Bolt, Abraid, we just, as you can see, we're really starting with some premium removal spells. Having removal in this set is really important to make sure you can deal with whichever strong rares come across from your opponents. Reclusive Taxidermist would be my next pick out of the pack, because we have seen a little bit of green, but by pick three, we don't really have a huge indication of what's open. At this point, I kind of wish I'd taken the uh, red one drop to start because we do are seeing a lot of red cards. Here, we'll take Visionary, I think is better than Blood Petal Celebrant. It's got bigger stats on his baseline, even though this is a first striker and this dies into a blood, but this can just straight up draw you a card. So I think that card's the best. We're seeing a little bit of blue, still some white cards, some green cards. I like the Visionary here. Part of the reason I made my decision not to take the 1-2 is because the 1-2 is essentially, if you can make only one wolf from it, it's like 4 mana for a 3-2 and a 1-2, which is fine, but not really game-breaking. And I feel like getting one wolf out of it is about as much as you can expect in most games, and sometimes you won't even be able to do that. The exiling three cards from your graveyard is really a relevant clause. Okay. So we're continuing to see some white cards. There is a Voldaren Epicure in this pack. I'm not the huge biggest fan of this card, even if some people like it or it performs decently in some decks. I would just rather take like more impactful cards. Evolving Wilds is always great. There's some green cards here, and there's also Traveling Minister, which I think is the pick. I've been very impressed by Traveling Minister. It always just seems to be really annoying, really enables attacks. I'm not a huge fan of the Devils, even though we do have a couple of removal spells that go well with it. This pick would mean we give up on Bleed Dry, but Black hasn't seemed overwhelmingly open, and going into Red White is a good spot. Evolving Wilds is a, another consideration. It would probably be my second pick out of this pack, just to give me some flexibility, help my mana. I like the Minister. This is close. A lot, I really like Reckless Impulse. I've been very impressed with it, but I also think Blood Petal Celebrant, just to get more two-drop creatures, is nice. So I'm going to take the Celebrant. There's also a relatively late Socialite, 
relative to the late ancestor, but I would take the reckless impulse over both of those, because I'm guaranteed to be red at this point, I think, judging by my solid start into red with some great cards, and so I think just getting another red card here is the best. Socialite and Ancestor. I think Socialite's better than Ancestor in this sort of deck, probably. But I would go Celebrant, Impulse, and then Socialite, I think. Okay, interesting spot here. We could consider taking, like, Ragged Recluse, Gluttonous Guest. Take another black card to go with this Bleed Dry. I think Gluttonous Guest is quite good. And I think that overall, it's better than Ragged Recluse. I've been pretty impressed with the Guest. Sure Strike's also just a good combat trick. But I don't really feel like I'll miss Sure Strike, whereas Gluttonous Guest just does pretty much everything you want. There's also Blessed Geist, which can do good work sometimes. I already have a couple two drops. I'm fine just taking a more mid-rangey card. I'm not necessarily going to go all out aggro. And Guest just does a lot of good things. Okay, now Blood Craze Socialite's the best card in the pack. Moving back towards black, which is nice. I think it's way better than Distracting Geist. Hits like a truck. Ragged Recluse can be fine, but it's much worse than I initially thought it was. I mean, it's funny, when I initially read this, I forgot about its synergy with Blood Tokens. And then after playing with the card a bit, it doesn't flip all that often. It flips a decent amount, but Socialite has been impressive. What? We wheeled the Wolf Rider? Well, I'll certainly take it on the wheel. That is insanity to me. This card's quite good. I mean... Your stuff was naturally going to die. If you ever make a wolf out of it, it's a pretty good deal. If you ever make two wolves, it's just like game-breaking. Ridge Wolf is fine in a lot of red decks, but I'm not going to have any wolves in red-black. Yeah, that's kind of wild to me. And the spiked Ripsaw Wield. I'm certainly going to... I think I'm going to take that over the knife. I'm not the biggest fan of knife. I know a lot of people are, have been trying it and liking it, but I don't think it's the best card still. And Ripsaw still seems great to me. And we could still go into, if we're getting this late of a Ripsaw, maybe green is open. Maybe green is open indeed. Oh my gosh, what is happening? There can't possibly be a green drafter at the table if we're wheeling these cards. Or a red drafter, apparently. I don't know what's happening. What is happening? I guess we can just play red green. I think this card's... The wolf is better than the epic here. Well... Oh my gosh, wow. Having read the signals, red-green looks so unbelievably open. But we also get past Soren here. I mean, open Soren. And Soren is ridiculous too. And we did see some black cards too. Oh, but there's also a child of the pack. Oh, man. I kind of just want to take the child of the pack because I think I'm going to have more fun with that deck. Because it's got to be so open. I don't think there's another red or green drafter at this table. <laughs> and so I'm just going to pass the Soren. Soren's like a A plus level bomb. This card's pretty good, though. And I just think this deck's going to be more fun to draft when I know my deck is wide open. Take the Celebrant. I would like a Massive Might. But yeah, it's uh, certainly an interesting one. But I want to try out this Spike Dripsaw, and I've never gotten to play it. And the fact that we wield this card and the Ripsaw means we're going to get an insane suite of green cards. I don't think anyone's playing green. So, probably a controversial pick, but... Especially because I could have gone into black a black deck, but I just really want to try this deck out. It seems quite good. This card also plays really well with Werewolves. And yeah, hopefully we can wheel Massive Might, maybe. We'll just keep getting two drops, though. Get our sixth two drop. That really frees us up to not care about getting two drops for the rest of the draft. We can get a couple here and there, but we don't really have to prioritize them. Alluring Suitor is great. Love to see it. Worked great with my little curve out potential here. Snarling Wolf would be a fine addition, potentially depending on if we get any wolf synergies. But yeah, so far, liking the way this pack is going. Hmm. Hmm. 
I don't like the Rack on Terror all that much. Never seemed that impressive to me. The 2-3 two, the two, Wolf seems fine. I mean, Werewolf Guy seems fine. As does Witch's Web. I think I just would rather have the creature, though. Creatures are good with the Taxidermist. They're good with, like, Wolf Rider, because they'll trade off and die. They're good with any things that care about flipping. And I can get Combat Tricks later. Flame Blessed Bolt is better than Wolf Strike, even though Wolf Strike is nice. I just think the Bolt is a little bit better. Wouldn't mind the wolf, blade, wolf Strike, though. Booyah, we got the pup. You love to see it. We have one wolf, two wolves, three wolves, and we're probably going to get a snarling wolf back. Maybe even get this. We're going to end up with enough wolves to make the card good, I'd say. You only need like a few. Currently we have one wolf, two werewolves, and we'll probably get some more, given that we're in red-green. Fearful Villager is good. We haven't seen a good black card all pack, really, other than the Soren, so I'm feeling pretty good about where we're at here. We've got quite a few flip cards. And we got this Ripsaw. Great curve of creatures. Pretty much all premium two drops. This is our worst two drop, but it still has good wolf synergy, so we'll play it. I'll take the expert. Seems pretty good. Especially if we can make it nighttime with one of these mana sinks. I want to try it at least. I think I've only played with it once. Pretty decent on the front side. Kind of takes over on the back side. Cloak Cadet. I just like Sure Strike the best here. I don't like the Weary Prisoner because it doesn't attack particularly well on the front side. and Just not a great it like, reminds me of the 2-5 from Midnight Hunt, which was just a really bad werewolf. And combat tricks are great in this sort of deck. And the massive might that I wanted came back. Perfect. I think that's better than Spore Crawler here. Which is kind of wild, because Spore Crawler looks like an insane card. But combat tricks are just so important for this sort of deck. They let you just keep attacking. Ooh, one of each. Nice. Yeah, I'm just going to take the knife. I'm not going to play Bramble Armor. Bramble Armor is certainly worse than knife. Yeah, last pick, Sporeback Wolf. Feeling good about my decision to stick with Red Green. Oh my gosh. I'm just going to take the Alluring Suitor. This card is still just nutso. I love Pack Song Pup. And I have a few wolves to make it good. Oh, uh, but I think the Pack Song Pup is more likely to wheel than the Alluring Suitor. And the Alluring Suitor has been just an absolute beating. And I have a lot of two drops already. It's tough though. Suitor's great. Pup is great. And I have a deck that's probably going to be good for Pup, given that I have three wolves, and four werewolves. But we'll try to wheel the Pup. We'll get aggr aggressive with that. And if we don't wheel the Pup, we're going to wheel the Hookhand Mariner. Because there's certainly not more than one other green drafter. We'll take Ascendant Pack Leader. Great little wolf there. Also, Wolf Strike here. Maybe wheel that or wheel the Sawblade Stinger, but we'll just get a great little one drop wolf. Hmm, Reckless Impulse or Infestation Expert. I'll just take the Impulse. Great little card draw for my deck that has mostly cheap spells. Dig up. Not really in the market for that. Not in the market for that. Oakshade Stalker is pretty solid. It's just a three drop werewolf, though. Another thing I can do where I pass with this at instant speed to flip it to nighttime. I'll take a third Flame Blast Bolt. Don't mind if I do. Just a great removal spell. I do like a Hookhand Mariner as much as the next fellow. This deck is excellent. Like, we'll be able to just cut like all of our weakest cards, which is nice. We just have only premium cards for the deck. Jeez Louise. Sixth pick Rending Flame. Just nutso.
Blood Petal Celebrant is a good two drop. Very good. We are seeing a lot of good cards here. We have nine two drops. Huh. We'll probably start to shave lands. Shave some of our worst cards, like our random combat trick, like Witch's Web. No, we didn't wheel the pack song pup. Sad day. Is there really another red green drafter? Find that hard to believe. Maybe someone else realized it was wide open. Oh man. Alluring suitor is better, but it still makes me sad. Sawblade Slinger is great. So we can just cut all of our non-premium cards. I think this card is probably better than some of our other stuff. Cut the Witch's Web. Maybe we just cut our expensive cards. I want the sharpshooter anyway. Oh, this deck is sick. I'm not gonna play this. I'll just take the uncommon to build the collection. Another massive might is great. Sign me up. Uh, Lightning Wolf last pick. That's a relatively solid card to see last pick. Oh gosh, building this deck is gonna be tricky. We have so much good stuff. So much good stuff. Type creature. Nope, that was not what I wanted to do. There's a way to like... No, I forget how to sort the deck list itself in that way. Maybe this. There we go. So we have a great curve of creatures. Two, three, four, five, nine two drops is a lot. Three combat tricks. Quite a few good removal spells. How many wolves do we have? Four wolves, two werewolves. Hmm. Maybe we aren't really a pack song pup deck and we can just cut the pack song pup and like this uh, sporeback wolf and the land call it a day there because we aren't as heavy green so we could go something like that no pack song pup has got like and then we only have two wolves two werewolves pack song pup seems good but given that a lot of our cards aren't wolves and werewolves and we cut a lot of the wolves and werewolf synergies this might just be better we have four five six Seven two drops. How many creatures are in this deck? Fourteen. Maybe we just want to add back the creatures. Eight eight split maybe. Maybe I don't want... I mean, I probably do want Reckless Impulse. The card's just great. I could also cut Spiked Ripsaw, because my deck just doesn't really care about equipping stuff, but it's so good with, like, Blood Petal Celebrant that it's worth keeping, I think. So what would I cut? Maybe the Oakshade Stalker. Hmm. 
and this is also kind of like a land for some of my expensive stuff. Maybe I cut Sure Strike because I have the Massive Mites, but I think three combat tricks is good, but I only have 14 creatures, so maybe I'd rather have another creature. Pack Song Pup is maybe better with five other wolves and werewolves. What would it be better than, though? Cutting Sure Strike feels bad. Hmm. Kind of want to run it like this. I do like the pup, but it feels hard to use in this deck where I have five wolves and werewolves. But what do I cut for the pup? Is it better than the Slinger? Slinger seems really good to me. Huh. We could even have the Dream Curve. Maybe it's better than a Celebrant. Blood Petal Celebrant seems great as well, though. Creatures count, 15. Yeah. Yeah, Pup is probably better than the Celebrant. I could go even heavier towards the wolf theme and play like Infestation Experts and all of my Nighttime Matters cards and then just really focus on getting it to be nighttime by like like holding up my mana for stuff. Oh, maybe that's a good build because if it becomes nighttime when I have like a couple of those and a couple of these, like I could just add all of my wolves and werewolves. Hmm. Huh, huh, huh. Bit to build for another day. Impulse does seem good in the deck, but maybe it's worse than the Celebrant. Yeah, let's just try it like this. Our colors are fairly equally balanced. We've got a pretty good curve. I mean, excellent curve in terms of two drop density. And yeah, we'll see how this does. And maybe we'll rebuild it at some point to see if there's a better build, but... We could even potentially go lower on lands. Like I could cut a forest to play a Reckless Impulse or something. That might be too greedy, but our curve stops at three pretty much. Huh. We have these to give us blood tokens, but... Seven forests for a lot of green cards seems a little bit sketchy. Maybe we even go down this far. I kind of want to try it like this. Let's do it. I'll see you folks in the matches. Before I get to the games, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the patrons who support my content, my channel, at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas, and special shout out to those at the credits level. It is thanks to Patreon support that I'm able to make as many videos as I do, so if you found my videos to be of some value, maybe they've helped you win a couple of extra games on the arena ladder, or maybe you've crushed your FNM because of some of my advice, and you want to help me continue making the videos, then Patreon is the best way to do so, and as my way of saying thank you, you even gain access to some pretty cool Patreon exclusive rewards, like access to my card by card grade spreadsheet, my tier list for Crimson Vow, which is an excellent bonus resource to help you crush your competition, especially early on in the format when a lot of people don't know how to evaluate the cards. But anyway, I do hope you are enjoying the video so far, regardless of whether or not you decide to become a patron. And without further ado, let's get to the games. Welcome to round one. Nice little hand here. Our deck functions really well on two lands, so I think 15 lands is actually fine. It's more a matter of the color problem than anything else. Because, like, only seven green sources is not that many. I 
kind of wish we'd wield that other pup. Pup is a card that I really wanted to get more reps with. Blood Petal Celebrant plays great with Massive Might. There's any combat trick, really. It already has First Strike. I'd rather save my Massive Mind, I think, because that can be used, I don't know, with all of my creatures. Oh, that was a great draw for me. So there is the argument that because I have two green cards, I would rather save the Flame Blessed Bolt. <laughs> Which is certainly a worthy argument to consider. Because then I can't go like Taxong Pup plus Massive Might in the same turn. Deadly Dancer's so good. Are you terrifying? I guess using the Massive Might would have worked out better, given the fact that they just played the Blood Tithe Harvester. Maybe I was just supposed to pump to deal two extra damage that turn. But I'm going to play the Child of the Pack next turn. Though maybe I'll have to play it post-combat so I can still attack with my cards into the Deadly Dancer. Or into the Alluring Suitor. I could take a turn off of attacking and just play my child of the pack. But if I attack with these three, what blocks do they have? They don't really have good blocks. They'll probably block there. And then they'll take... I'm just going to be patient. I can trade these off. I don't think I have to bother. Yeah, 
they can't attack me. I have a massive board. I'm about to be able to flip it to nighttime. And I have Flame Blessed Bolt. Okay, Dollhouse. That doesn't affect me really at all. That card's really slow. Oh, it gains haste. Never mind, that does affect me. They can't kill my child of the pack, though. They can kill my deadly dancer. So I'm going to deal four to them. They'll have no creatures in play, but they will have the dollhouse. Mm. So they're going to be able to make a 1-1 one -one belligerent guest or something. Blood Petal Celebrant is just a great card for a beatdown deck. 2 1 First Strike is really powerful. Oh, that's a problem. That could be hard to beat. Eh, I still have Lethal, I think. They make a blocker. Yeah, they get to make a 1 1 and another 1 1, and I have two creatures that are lethal regardless. Wow, they have some good rares. Got there. Feels good. I wonder... I mean, I feel like the Reckless Impulse was good there. My deck doesn't need a lot of lands, so I think 15 lands is fine. The color stuff is a little bit off. Um, I think it's better not to rely on it becoming nighttime. It's also better to just lean into the aggressive role with all of my like aggressive guys. Maybe I would rather have Sure Strike than like Reckless. In a sight, but I think having two combat tricks is fine. I also have a lot of removal that can kind of be used in a combat trick role, because you can often use removal spells with first strikers to burn their creatures down, as we were doing with our um, flame blast bolts in that game. But certainly felt like a powerful deck. The pack song pup definitely performed as well, but alluring suitor, just a better card. It's fun because funny because I always like. Remember the picks where it's like, oh man, I had to pick this great card over this great card. But I think Alluring Suitor is correct there, not only because it's just a better card, but also in the spot, but also because Pack Song Pup could wheel. Like I was wheeling like reclusive taxidermist and stuff, so like Pack Song Pup could totally wheel in those situations. Wanna know? Good place to be. And we have a great hand here. Having only 15 lands in the deck makes me very confident keeping this sort of hand. I think I might lead with the Taxidermist and then just double spell the following turn. Really just deploy my threats out quickly. Depends on what we draw, of course. But I think that's probably a good strategy. Just get as much mana worth of spells into play so we can start attacking and then look for removal and stuff. Because this way we'll just have five power in play.
Also, Blood Petal Celebrant will die into a blood token, which makes it even harder to flood out. No, don't kill him, please. My precious reclusive taxidermist. Oh man. Bleeding with Blood Petal Celebrant might have worked out better there, I guess. I think it was worth the high upside play. Generally speaking, it is. In the early turns, when they're you don't really know much about their hand or what they're what's going on. And the gift of fangs was going to kill kill something eventually. I have a lot of vampires, but I also have a lot of like random wolves and stuff. Whew. Okay, that is a slow card for sure. And if they do kill one of my creatures, my wolf rider becomes a lot more appealing as well. I can't believe I wield the Wolf Rider. It feels like a pretty solid card. I almost first picked it. So the fact that it wield was shocking. If they play like Blood Craze Socialite here, they are in just so much trouble. Same difference. Random 4 mana 3 3. This is just even better for me because they can. Uh... And then I'll attack with the Wolf Rider because I only have two creatures in my graveyard so far. Or two cards. So I'm still just doing extra damage. I'll hold this card because if my Blood Petal Celebrant does die, I'll get to discard it. And my curve doesn't go high enough. But I do have Reckless Impulse, so I want to be able to use that optimally if I draw it. Ah, uh, Lightning Wolf. Unfortunate, for sure. Um, I've basically drawn half of my lands. In, like... Yeah. Not... In a statistically unlikely amount of time. I think this game's kind of just the way it goes sometimes, but I don't really put a lot of stock in my deck's strength based on this game because I just haven't drawn any spells. I think it might, I've drawn two spells in five lands or something. Four lands or something. 12 cards. Oh, yeah, we've drawn five cards, so I've drawn two spells, three lands. If they attack here, that's really good for me. Daybreak Combatants is just not a good card. This is tough. Making a 3-2 is really appealing. Getting a blood token. So I think I'm going to do that. They probably have a combat trick of some kind. But getting my blood petal celebrant to die is pretty good for me. Draws me closer to action. And I get to start using the wolf rider. Because now I'll have three creatures. And then the blood token gets me another card deep. Perfect. If that's the card they have in their hand, I'm okay with it. Hmm. 
Hmm. Not the best there. Again, I've drawn over half my lands. And so, like, it's just going to be hard to win this game. Not impossible, mind you. This card giving unblockable is certainly on my mind. Now that's really unfortunate. Not being able to benefit from my 3-2 is, uh, my army of 3-2s from my rare is kind of rough. Okay. This is where I need, like, Reckless Ambition or Reckless, uh, whatever it's called. Yeah, we're just dead. Because they attack the next turn and then and hit me for 8, and no matter what I draw, they get to give their guy unblockable. Hmm. That one was, I'm just going to chalk that up to me drawing half my lands really quickly. So I'm not going to make any changes to the deck based on it. It didn't feel like an inherent weakness in the deck. It's just some of your games are going to get lost due to circumstances of that nature. That's just how it goes. If you get angry every time that happens, you just aren't going to be able to play because you'll just get angry once every six games or so. Because not all of them are drawing too many lands. Sometimes you don't draw enough lands, you have to mulligan to oblivion or things like that, so... Just fairly solid stuff here. Okay, on the draw, we'll certainly keep this. We only have seven forests in the deck, which isn't great, but these give us blood tokens to draw towards stuff. A couple of plays locked up, we're on the draw. And we immediately get rewarded. Nice. Oh, the taxidermist. At this point, I'd rather kill whatever they're going to play with the taxidermist using my rending flame or my combat tricks or whatever. Rather than kill the taxidermist itself with like a rending flame. Lumberdon, sure, we will certainly want to kill that at some point coming up. I'm just going to kill it now. I am certainly worried about it a little bit. Four toughness is hard to get past in my color combo. Okay, that's much better for me. Just gonna be mana efficient. Could have played another Blood Petal Celebrant. Weird attack. Probably gonna play a six drop or something. Nope, nothing, okay. Let my stuff flip.
They probably have a Wolf Strike or something, and they've been trying to play around Massive Might. What did they have that turn? Now I'm just confused. Okay. Sure. Gonna wait a turn. Could be incorrect, but I don't mind waiting. Okay, and they're attacking. They probably have a second flourishing hunter. No, they do not. Okay, and Mariner. Okay, well, this is good. Because now, I need to make a big attack. They'll block there. Taking three, five, seven, nine. Okay, so they're still dead. No, they're not dead. Oh no, they go to one. I did the math off. I thought that they would die, but I guess the plus two plus two kept them alive. And now they can attack back for 11. Gives all my creatures plus one plus zero and trample. I fear a removal spell or some form of interaction. Yeah, that's why I didn't go for it that turn. I still have a creature advantage. Oh my gosh, why? Oh my gosh, I'm totally gonna lose now, aren't I? Just a disaster. Oh no, because if they attack, they die? Really? They have three blockers. Two of my guys are getting through. Wow, they were dead if I drew a... That's so bad. If I had drawn a mountain, they were dead. Or a combat trick. Because I can attack, buff st two things. But this thing has to buff itself. This thing has vigilance, doesn't it? No, it does not. Just reach and train. Good. 
Gosh darn it. I need to draw a mountain, I think, to win the game. They have five, six creatures. I have seven attackers. So I guess I can't just draw a mountain to win the game. But if they attack me, then I just need to draw a mountain to draw the game, win the game. There's the mountain that I needed last turn. Need them to whiff for a turn, and then I'll win. It's not getting any better. Just gonna hope for the best here. Hope they didn't draw anything. Dang, the fact that they had that massive might really got me. Got there. Let's go. Gotta be willing to take your shot. Realize the game's not getting any better. They have big creatures that are growing. They're gonna be able to alpha strike me at some point here. Especially with it becoming nighttime. Just shoot your shot while you have the chance. Gosh, I can't believe that. I mean, we made that big alpha strike. And they uh, really lived at one and then almost turned that game around. Wow. Sure Strike would be pretty good in this deck, I think. But I think all the cards are pretty good. I have not missed having 16 lands. 15 has felt fine. But obviously, small sample size. Okay, we'll keep this. One drop into two drop with a chance of drawing a forest to really improve the hand. Obviously not the best if we don't draw fours, but we only have seven in the deck, so. We also have a lot of red cards we could draw. Maybe I was supposed to keep that mountain in case we lose our... Blood Petal Celebrant, but I like to hit my land drops. Okay. Got them down to 12, and now we have a little bit of a waiting game here while we wait to draw our forest. And once we get our spiked ripsaw rolling, we'll be in great shape once again, because all of our creatures are terrifying if we have a spiked ripsaw. 
Also, massive might's pretty good with our first strikers and things of that nature. Ah, uh, that was pretty good. Nice little three for two because I guess they killed their own token. A little bit of a wrath action. Classic wrath action lawsuit, as they say. This guy's going to be a 4 4. Pretty nice. I'll play my 4 4. And this guy. And we're right back at it. How did I wheel this card and get it like 10th pick? No! Brutal. Ugh. Oh. Savage. Better than waiting to equip my guy and then losing him. Oh no. Well, this is fine. This is fine. Okay, well. I'm gonna kill that guy now. Play the ripsaw. Because I just want to make sure that I don't have to worry about the indestructible part of it. They have a lot of mana, so they should be able to use the indestructible fairly effectively. Undead butler, you say? This guy can kill the butler at some point. Okay, so they have other spells, or they wouldn't do that, because they don't want this thing to flip, I presume. Maybe they do want it to flip. I could equip and play Voltaic Visionary. Could just play the Sawblade Slinger. Zap their guy. I feel like they have destroy target attacking creature. Because I don't understand why else you would not play a spell to prevent my guy from flipping. Because they had the one two. Sure. Not gonna sack a forest, that's for sure. They need four more creatures, so they did discard a creature.
So I get to trample over for six damage. So they had piercing light. Maybe? I still think they might have had something for this pack mate. Like another fierce retribution. Sure, if they want me to sacrifice my saw blades later. I'm more than happy to oblige them. I'm going to flip back to daytime so I can start using my guy again. This is for six, so they'll have to block it. And discard a card. And I'll get a blood token. Could have considered using my trample trick. This thing will wield the spike trip saw better. I've been playing around them having deal destroy target tapped creature, which is maybe incorrect. So they have one card left in hand. Okay, that's a disgustingly broken card.
100% killing the Angie if I can. Holy yes, that's a good one. Flip my guy back. Okay. Sure. This way we'll get to get their fierce retribution out of their hand. Because if they do have it, they're going to play it here. And maybe I was just playing around it for nothing. It probably is likely that I was. Kaya. So that earlier turn where they passed without doing anything, they just had this like piercing light or something, or they just didn't have it, or they just had all their red spells or something. Fascinating. Um, sure, I'll keep my guy alive. And deal three to them. So next turn I'll have three lethal attackers. And I'll be able to give my guy trample. <sighs> they have some draws at it because of their blood tokens. Okay. They know that one creature is not good enough. Sure. Luckily, we have the Flame Blessed Bolt at the ready. Wow. That was a crazy game. Mostly because I played around them having a card that felt like they had to have it for quite some time. Fierce Retribution, they did not have. They had Piercing Light. Hmm. Yeah. Probably learned my lesson to just not play around cards. But at the same time... If you can win while playing around a card, it's pretty nice. Like, not attacking with my guy, just made that game take forever. Forever and ever, amen. Yeah. Feels like the deck is rolling, though. The massive mites have been pretty good. All the cards are playing pretty well together. Ooh, nice little start here. Pack leader into pack song pup might just be the best start my deck is capable of. So, maybe a nice little quick win here. Oh, no, they had Gift of Fangs. Gotta be kidding me. Never lucky. Okay, we'll just have to adapt. Well, that's unfortunate.
Oh, I botched it. Have to attack with exactly two creatures. Oops. I never knew that. Well, I learned my lesson. I will not mess that up again. Hitting him like a truck. <sighs> if my deadly dancer dies, I'm in big trouble. Because that turn, the deadly dancer's buffs accounted for about four extra points. No, because every buff is two. Every man I spend on is worth an extra point of damage. So I did extra four extra damage because of the deadly dancer. Okay. Okay, so they're at 10. And I can use the Deadly Dancer buff twice. I can attack with everything here. Okay, I see what they're doing here. I think it's just best to leave them with no creatures. So this guy's gonna... So they could take three right now. So they're gonna go to seven. I could just bump this and this twice to put them to one. I think it's best to just leave them without their life gain thing. Tilda, Dawnheart Mentor. Is that the last creature I needed to make this thing into a 4-4? Four -four? Okay, cool. Okay, wolf is pretty good. I have a full graveyard. Katilda. A. Eh? These are a bit of a non-bow, but I can just exile my... Oh, gosh. If the pup had been a different card, I wouldn't would have been winning because it wouldn't have been a 1-1. One, one. Oh, no. I got them so close, and now they're just going to wreck me with Desperate Farmer. No, they're getting the Heron back. Oh, they have the land. Okay. Hmm. The reason I played the land is because I can use Massive Might, and then I can exile double the number of creatures. So if they, like, attack all, give their thing lifelink, and get go to 10 life. Oh, 
Oh no, but I can't do two in one turn. Wow, the fact that they had courier bat is really not good for me. Jeez Louise. They gained four more life though. Oh my gosh. Terrifying. So I am losing the games where I can't uh, draw any, like when I draw too many lands, which I would certainly classify this game as one of those. Like I've drawn seven, eight lands. They gain five life a turn. It's going to be really hard to race that. Oh, that's really good, though. Maybe I should have done this on my turn so they couldn't draw a pump spell. Or an adamant will. I learned my lesson. Only attack with two creatures here. This is an insane game. The swings are so real. Wow, they have so much life link. It's insane. Gain so much life. If they want to trade those, I'm fine with that. They can activate Heron? No. Okay, that gets indestructible. This is insane. They've gained so much life. No! They don't have the mana to stop me from activating it, though. Just a, give me a break. I swear, I don't deserve this deck. Why? I didn't deserve to draw 10 lands in my first half. I only have, I have 15 spells left here. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Uh, 
Oh no, they're just gonna activate that, yeah. I botched, botched that one royally. Right, because they just activated pre-combat, what am I doing? Block. And game. So unfortunate, honestly. That game was super close, and if I had drawn two more spells, I think I would have won. Just ten lands was too many to handle. That turn where they could use Courier Bat to get back a um the Heron was really good. Because I had killed the Heron, I think, with a a massive mite or a pump spell or something, but yeah, that was just really unfortunate. Anyway, I'll see you folks next round. Welcome to another round. We will keep this hand on the play. Unfortunate not to have a two drop, but we do have nine that we could draw. I think nine. And then this hand becomes great. It's always good to know the contents of your deck, because I have roughly one in four odds of drawing that. Actually higher. I do have exactly nine. Getting to flip a luring suitor and a braid something in addition to whatever else I draw would be quite good. White black has some kill spells that can kill this. Here's downfall comes to mind. Okay, so they exploit the vampire slayer. I could have a really explosive turn depending on what I draw here. Wow, that is actually a nutty draw. It's a little unfortunate that I don't have any extra red mana to pump them this next turn, but should be able to put them quite low thanks to this rending flame. So I can just kill whatever they play as a blocker. The Luring Suitor is just a messed up card. So, happy that I have picked that card every time I've seen it pretty much. I've drawn basically all of my forests kind of wild. Got the win. Whew, nice. This deck feels very strong. I've lost both games that I flooded, but my deck doesn't flood very easily, I don't think. And I also function pretty well on two lands. So overall, pretty happy. Four, four and three is always a solid record for a deck, locking that in at the very least. And it could definitely do better. I feel like I've had some statistically unlikely games in terms of my land draws already. And so I'll try to make sure that I do my best to have good draws. Not that I necessarily have any control over that other than how I constructed the deck. But I think I constructed it pretty well. Okay, this is a good hand. It's unfortunate that I don't have a green source to just have the ultimate curve out here. But I do have Visionary to help me find a land. Okay, I'm going to play the Visionary. And they do have the Zap for it. That's unfortunate. Mm, yeah. I don't think it's correct to play around Flame Blast Bolt ever, really. 
I'm just gonna play both of my guys this coming turn. And then if they play a wolf to buff this, I will just still be able to flame blast bolt that. And then I'll be able to attack, yeah. Use my off to a fantastic start here and then i get to even play this keswick wolf rider with two cards in my graveyard already and then once i play rending flame i'll have another one sure rebound wolf is a card yeah braid my guy okay just nutty every time i draw it alluring suitor is actually unreal I have two good threats in play, and a good removal spell on hand, and not very many lands in my deck. Okay. I could play the Taxidermist and just attack with the Deadly Dancer first. I think I'd like to do that. This Taxidermist, and then let me double pump, and so I can then start attacking with the Celebrant. If I draw another mountain. I like that play because they're not going to block this thing, but they can. They kind of think they will be able to, which then lets me just use the trample to my advantage. Hmm. They have two mana. If they could have an abrade, but if they had a braid, they would have used it. Same with flame bless bolt. They could have sure strike. I think if I just attack. Okay, they can see. I was just considering whether to attack with both. And save my Reckless Impulse, which I think I was going to ultimately do. Because it's so effective to just keep going while the going's good before they do find an Abrade. And they definitely would have used it, unless they were like ultimate, ultimately messing with me. But even then, that would have been really bad by them, because then I get an extra 4-1 attacker. That they just don't get to chump block very effectively. On the play once more. Great hand. The we'll take Visionary can find me something to do, hopefully. In the fact, they have a blue mana is pretty good, because I feel like my deck is going to line up well against a slower blue deck. If that is what they are playing. Oh, Steel Bird Spirit. two drop and then next turn I will abrade but I'll hopefully be able to flame blast bolt something this turn maybe even something with a disturb cost associated with it it's a shame this doesn't flip into a wolf nice I get to get the traveling minister off the board the card can be super annoying Maybe they have a syncopate or a uh, way to protect this, but even then I'm okay with that because it means they won't be able to protect the spirit. I'm hoping they don't have the cradle card. I feel like they would have fired it off. Nice. Again, 
I feel like I'm not sure whether or not to play around destroy target attacking creature. But it feels like a card they could easily have there. Maybe I'm just not supposed to play around it. But I don't have any other threats going right now. And this is really a good spot for me. So it looks like they are not going to hold it up. They do have it. Okay. I think I'm fine trading this for a 1 1 spirit. Pack Song Pup has not been super good in my deck. that I can, and then when I zap this with my Rending Flame, I'll deal two damage to them. Should be enough for lethal. Ah, Catilda. Well, we're gonna have to get rid of that Catilda. And when I say get rid of it, I mean immediately. That's pro vampires. They're at two now, and they're just dead on board. Because this can puff itself. Ooh, managed to get that done. Nice. Whew. Couple of quick wins there. The deck is really cruising. I really think Spiked Ripsaw is good in this deck, too. Ooh, Diamond 1. Mythic is right around the corner. Exciting stuff. Fortunately, this deck can't take me to Mythic. It's always nice to have a really solid deck that feels like it really came together. Six wins, two losses. In the comments below, leave whether or not you believe in this deck, whether you think it's going to get to the trophy. Some encouragement, any kind words. It's going to be an exciting time. One final game to decide it all. The deck has brought me this far. I don't see a reason to change it now. Ah, uh, yes. Classic matchup between Nicole Bolas and Fibblethip. Okay, we'll keep this. On the play. Got an Ascendant Pack Leader. We would like to draw at one of our two drops, but again, 9 out of 36. I think we have 9 two drops, roughly, is 1 in a 4. So we have decent odds, like 25% chance of drawing one of our two drops here. And we have 4 spells, both our colors, and an aggressive creature to start the beatdown train. So off to a good start. We will need to draw some creatures, but we'll be fine for now. Sure, and we get to Flame Bless Bolt that. Fortunately, it looks like this could be one of those Flood Out games that really wrecks me. Okay, well, it's interesting because typically just using the Ripsaw would be okay here, but I think because of how strong that guy is, I, when he does get exploded, I'm just going to kill it. And then next turn I'll equip the Ripsaw and play the Celebrant. Line. They can jump block if they want. All of my cards work so well with this Ripsaw. The Ripsaw is just going to tear them apart. Literally as well as Ripsaw figuratively. 
Hunter, they can get rid of my Sporeback Wolf if they want. I'm glad I played the Celebrant, because Celebrant's a better card, because I get the Blood Token when it does die. Sure. Still get to attack with both. Even got the Pack Song Pup, nice. Yes! Woo! Let's go! I knew Spiked Ripsaw was good. For anyone who's been watching a lot of my videos, this is the first time that I got to play with the Spiked Ripsaw, despite every time I see it. I want to be like, oh, Spiked Ripsaw looks amazing. I really want to get to play it. And that game really shone through as the epitome of what Spiked Ripsaw can do, just turning every single two-drop early drop into a devastating threat for the opponent. They were just like, well, I can't beat the Spiked Ripsaw. Wow, seven wins. Bounced back for some, from some tough mana draws, but got there in the end. I mean, honestly, what can I say? Alluring Suitor is one heck of a card. Just absolutely devastating. Triple Flame Blast Bolt. Wolf Rider was okay. The pa Ascendant Pack Leader. Pretty cool. Got four Blood Petal Celebrants. Like, what? We had two, three, four, five, nine two drops, as I was saying. Child of the Pack. Slinger. Mostly just the, carried by great removal and a great curve, along with the Massive Mites being excellent. Spike drip saw. I mean, we didn't draw this Oakshade Stalker a single, single time, which is pretty funny. But overall, pretty good stuff. I even liked having this Reckless Impulse. Great card in the deck. A lot of fun with this one. I think I built it pretty well as well. I think uh, putting in these extra top end cards would have just slowed it down unnecessarily. We had, I think, two two combat tricks with the Sweet Spot. The Rip Saw was fantastic. And uh, overall, just an excellent deck. I mean, do we even have a rare in this deck? No, we do. We have the two one drops as rares. Um, but they don't really feel like some of those game ending rares that you often see, like the Soren would have been like passing Soren, um, was a key part of that draft. And if you did make it all the way to the end of this video in the comment section down below, leave hashtag passing Soren pays off to let me know you made it all the way to the end. Because I mean, using the power of the spiked ripsaw, which we gained access to by not playing black for Soren, or I guess, yeah. And, uh, just leveraging our strong uncommons and synergies, we managed to get a trophy. 15 lands felt like kind of crazy because we lost games to flooding out, even though we only had 15 lands because our curve was so low. So pretty awesome deck. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, remember to hit that thumbs up button. It really does help the video succeed. Let's me know you enjoy it. Let's me know you want to see more of it. Also subscribe to the channel for more draft content. And if you are a subscriber, click that bell icon to get notified when I post future videos. Comment below with your questions, thoughts, and feedback. And if you would like to support my content and help me continue making these videos, Patreon is the best way to do so. Patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. Patrons really do help the channel out a lot. And it's great to see folks who are helping me continue to make videos that everyone can enjoy. So if you feel like you've been watching a lot of my videos and you've been enjoying them, Patreon is a great way to give back and help me continue making them. And uh, really does mean a lot to everyone who does that. Uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you can also find other stuff like Nikolai Bolas merchandise, the Nikolai Bolas Discord, my articles, and uh, the Nikolai Bolas Twitter, or the, all, all sorts of stuff linked in the description down below, as well as instructions for how to use Amazon Prime to support my content and no extra cost to yourself. So find all of that information linked in the description down below. And yeah, that's going to do it for this one. Super sweet to get a trophy with this deck. Really happy about it. Love all the cards here. They really played well together, and it was a great deck. That is going to do it for this one, though. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you next time.